the Kia Sportage has evolved into a compelling mid-sized SUV. But is the base grade petrol S manual model a good value proposition or merely a stripped out price leader designed to lure people into showrooms? Let's dive in and find out. Priced from just under $36,500 drive away, $2,000 less than the auto, the new Kia Sportage is no longer one of the most affordable mainstream SUVs in its class, but it's come a long way since inception as a weird looking Korean conveyance in 1993. It competes with the top sellers in Australia's biggest new car sales segment, including the Mazda CX-5, which is one of the few medium SUVs also still available with a manual. But for how long? If you need any more evidence that manuals are an endangered species, consider this. Kia sold 8,000 Sportages in Australia last year, and of that, just 152 are manuals. That's less than 2%. When it comes to design, you wouldn't know this was the base model because, well, it doesn't look like a bare bones poverty pack. It comes with 17 inch alloy wheels, boomerang shaped LED driving lights, LED tail lights and a roof spoiler. And I'd argue it looks better than its more expensive twin under the skin, the Hyundai Tucson. In terms of the engine, you get what you pay for. This two litre petrol donk generates barely enough power to pull the skin off cold custard. Yes, it's no firecracker. A six speed manual drives the front wheels. First impressions are, well, positive. The interior design is modern and appealing, but it's also very spacious and comfortable too. I like it. Fit and finish is good, and while there are hard plastics everywhere, they don't look or feel ultra cheap. The fully adjustable steering wheel is great to hold, has intuitive controls, and the ancillary stalks have an upmarket finish. There's even a pair of vanity mirrors with lights. The seats are firm but supportive, and while this cloth trim feels a bit crappy, I dare say it'd be very hard wearing. They're also manually adjustable and height adjust for the driver. I like the large and small spring-loaded cup holders, USB A and C ports, plus this 12 volt socket, but storage solutions are mediocre. There's only a small area for your phone and no wireless charging, and a tight central bin. The door pockets are okay, but there's no hidden storage down here for larger items, and there's no sunglasses holder either. Things improve when you lift your eyes. These twin LCD screens dominating the cabin and adding a little bit of class. The central eight inch touchscreen looks good, works well, and has these sleek touch sensitive buttons as well. It's pretty cool. The menu system is easy to use and this entry level Kia comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The more expensive model grades get a full size 12.3 inch widescreen but they need a cable to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a bit weird. But hey, it's a big win for this little underdog, right? While the infotainment provisions are pretty good, there are some missing features, such as digital radio, satellite navigation, and a head-up display. And although the driver's display looks like a fully digital 12.3 inch unit, it's a charming illusion. Only the central 4.2 inch section is fully digital, with the side panels appearing more like a, a Casio watch or something. You can change the colors and numbers, and hey, it has a high-tech look and it works well. The reversing camera has average visual quality and no 360 degree parking camera, but there is a secondary top-down angle and you do get rear parking sensors too. When it comes to safety, manual models miss out on active cruise control, trailer stability assist, and adaptive high beam dipping but you still get a strong safety suite comprising seven airbags, including a front central airbag, plus a safe exit warning system to avoid dooring cyclists. There's a lot more room in the back here than the previous generation Sportage, with excellent headroom and really good legroom. Comfort levels are good too, almost better than the front seat thanks to really good contouring around the back. 
While there are no USB ports in the back of this model, you do get a pair of large air vents and a storage cubby along with a fold-out armrest. There's also seat back pockets. Twin Isofix child seat anchorages are easy to access and there's three top tethers as well. Powered tailgate? Not at this price. However, the boot is large and well equipped and it even houses a full-size spare alloy wheel and tyre. I like that. There are two bag hooks, four tie-down points, a 12-volt socket and a decent cargo cover. You can also fold down the rear seats for extra space, but there's no quick-release boot levers in the back. For a relatively cheap SUV, it's well equipped, but how does she drive? Cue the non-committal music. This is probably one of the rarest brand new SUVs in Australia due to that six speed manual transmission. But you know what? It's a charming gearbox, smooth and seamless. The gears go into the gates nicely and you can just zip zip through the gears. I like it. That said, who wants to be rowing through the gears and riding the clutch in heavy traffic? The lethargic engine and lack of low end grunt doesn't help the situation as it needs extra revs to hustle along. But I must confess, I'm enjoying driving a manual in a mainstream car. It's novel and involving. And look, ask me again in about a month and I might have changed my tune. But right now, I'm having fun. Bigger and broader than its predecessor, the Sportage handles well with ultra light and easy steering, which makes short work of parking and tight maneuvers. At the same time, it handles well and is confident in corners, so you won't feel nervous on twisty roads. Ride comfort is really good as well, the suspension soaking up most lumps and bumps with ease, and even the bigger hits aren't that noticeable either. This impressive blend of ride comfort and driving dynamics is testament to the Australian tuned suspension. I reckon the investment Kia makes in local suspension calibration is worth every penny. In terms of refinement, the main thing I've noticed is there's a bit of engine noise, especially as the revs rise in first gear. But overall, it's a pretty smooth operator. One of the areas where a manual gearbox should excel is fuel efficiency, but the Sportage struggled. It missed the manufacturer's official claim as 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres by a significant margin. Despite the elaborate design, outward vision is really good, thanks to the large front and rear windscreens and also that higher ride height. As is often the case with SUVs, the small rear side windows do create a bit of a blind spot. Thankfully, the blind spot monitors are very effective. Overall, the driving experience is very good, thanks to sound chassis fundamentals that deliver a pleasant balance of confidence and comfort. For an entry-level SUV, it feels like a really polished product. Yeah, the engine is a bit flaccid, and while the manual gearbox is slick and fun to use, it will get tiresome around town if you're used to an auto shifter. Kia has one of the best new car warranties available, with coverage that lasts seven years but average annual service costs of almost $500 a pop are more than double what you'll pay in a new Toyota RAV4. But the Kia also comes with one year complimentary roadside assist, which renews free of charge annually for up to eight years when you service it with an authorized Kia dealer. While this base grade SUV doesn't have big digital screens, self parking tech, or a giant panoramic sunroof, it has a well sorted chassis plenty of space and represents solid value for money. But when you consider the $2,000 premium for the automatic transmission adds loads more safety features and extra convenience, you'd have to be a die-hard manual fan to make this choice. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. You can check out more videos here and here or on the Car Sales YouTube channel. And if you want all the news up to date when we're publishing new stuff, don't forget to subscribe.